Hello, welcome back. I was on a Facebook page the other day and the question came up and this is, a, this is what it said. And I thought, I don't know. I really don't know. If you see my previous video, the one about the, uh, the trace, you'll, you've got somewhere where I'm going and uh, you'll see how that originated now. Um, so it's sort of a, a rather sad <laughs> window on my life. That I spend hours trying to answer questions. Um, but the good thing is, it means that I give you the answers and as far as I'm aware they're true because I've done the tests and if you can find anything wrong with the test then please let me know. If you think that there's something I should be testing instead of that then let me know. It's meant to be a two way street. I know it's YouTube and it's sort of me talking to you but you know you can talk to me as well. Anyway what I wanted to do was to find out whether there was any real quality loss or how much quality loss or was it enough to worry about quality loss? You know, what is the effect of high speed dubbing on a domestic deck? People come up with all this crap on the Facebook pages about high speed duplications being rubbish, but then they are talking out of their backsides because they've never actually seen how it's done and they've never, they've never been able to quantify what they're listening to. Let's take a look at what working. This is from the Headless Duplicated Tapes website. This was something I found on the internet and you can see that it takes 9.4 seconds to fill that cassette. Assuming that's a 20 minute side on the cassette, that's 127 times normal speed. The fact that you hear a bad pre-recorded music tape doesn't mean that all music tapes that are pre-recorded are bad. The fact that that one was done on a high-speed dub doesn't mean that it's a problem. All pre-recorded music tapes have been done on a high-speed dub, except for the ones that have been done by somebody like, um, oh, I don't know, Red Manor Records, where they actually just sit there and put them into multiple decks. But if you've got a music cassette from the 80s or 70s, it was duplicated. Now, that means we're talking about frequencies that you and I can't even conceive, but it does mean that it should... You know, either be totally crap or pretty good. I'm guessing since the machine just costs so much that it's probably quite good. But I don't know. I'm I'm of the opinion that these people don't go out to make money by selling this rubbish because if they try we don't buy it. Look at tape look at type zero tapes. <sighs> people buy them for the packaging, not for the re reproduction. Anyway, let's see how we get on. I've got some interesting stuff here. I'll intersect with some of your bits and we'll see where we go. Catch you on the other side. The deck I used for this was the Ion Taped PC, purely because it's the only deck I've got that does high speed dubbing. The other day I got accused of advocating for this deck. I don't advocate for this deck. It has to be a deck I've got. I bought it a few years ago to copy all my old tapes to put them on the computer, and that was it. But looking at the specifications, it's not that bad, you know. If you look at the Ion spec, you've got 15 kilohertz, 58 dB signal noise ratio, and 0.2% while flutter. Then you look at the Metaxa and Sins, you've got 20 kilohertz, 67 dB, and 0.25% while flutter. So actually, the Ion beats the Metaxa and Sins, but all that money difference on the while flutter. The Metaxa and Sins reel to reel is thousands of dollars, and this one's a hundred dollars. But now you've got the starting point, let's see what we actually got from the results of this. These are the actual output files as seen by the computer from the deck when it was playing back. You'll have just seen there's a big difference between the noise and we'll just see again. So the times two noise is much lower than the times one noise. The times two looks to be two dB lower in noise on the silence. For such a budget machine, the respectability of this trace is quite good, up to 20 kilohertz. But look at this is the output at the times two. But of course the missing bottom. This is where you have to remember that what you're seeing there is only a, s a sweep up to 10 kilohertz. But that's because of the limitations of the digitalization, not because of the machine. Again, a times one playback, and you see the real 20 kilohertz response, and then you can see the times two playback, which is only up to 10 kilohertz, because of the speed difference, but it's there. Finally, looking at the spectrum for the music, at minus 20 dB, you can see it's uh, reasonable. At um, times two, you can see that it goes all the way up to 20 kilohertz. At zero dB, you've got a reasonable humps, and then at times two, you can see that all those humps have been shoved up a bit. It's easy to forget that at times two speed, all the frequencies are doubled. 
However, on the Times one, you can see it all stops at around about the 14 kilohertz. This is the trace for the digital original, and you can see it just goes up to a fraction over 15 kilohertz. Then this is put, comparing the two, and they basically stop at the same place. When you're looking at this, it's easy to forget that the thing on the orange trace is actually the noise floor for the tape, and shouldn't be confused with spurious signal. So that's the inputs all sorted out. That's what we are actually feeding into the other cassette to be the copy. Now, I don't actually advocate copying cassette to cassette anyway. And people should remember that that's what we're doing. So, you know, you wouldn't get a very good copy of a cassette in the old days. So why should you get a good copy of a cassette nowadays? And they shouldn't be compared to the original digital other than to say, well, that's what it originally started like and then go from there. What I'm actually showing you is one cassette being copied onto another. And so we're looking at the differences. And please don't get confused between hi-fi quality and all the rest of it. Because this is the same deck being used for all of this, the actual results are from an, an original recording to the copy of that recording and done at the two speeds. I'm not trying to advocate for the deck. I'm not trying to say that this is a wonderful thing to do. I'm just looking to see, is the actual myth or truth copying at double speed is not as good as copying at single speed and I think the results are looking a bit interesting so we'll go from there I've got three silences to show you this is the times one copy this is the times two copy and this is another times two copy but you can see that they're all around about the same and now we're going to look at the original and you can see that actually there's no real difference nothing to nothing between them now we get to the nitty-gritty music 0 dB and the copy and the original and the copy, you can see it just changed colour. And there's the times two copy, which is not quite the same. The biggest difference with the Maxell times two copy is that the levels are higher. The levels seem to be a result of the higher speed playback, and it seems to be sort of up to 2 dB or so. It can push you into the distortion level if you're not careful. Looking at the 0 dB sweep, you can see here it goes up to 20k on the original. Then on this it goes up to about 18k. And then on this one it goes up to just over 14k which is obviously because 14k times 2 is 28k. And that ties in quite nicely with the music, stopping at about 14k. I think we've looked at the charts enough, but let's have a look at one final one, which actually is relevant when we get to it now. To make it fair, I started this using two Philips FX tapes, and uh, that was fine, except that this happened. So eventually I ended up using the Max L, because it was the one that I knew that was actually capable of running and it would appear that the actual fact of running at two times, if you've got tapes that are a little bit um, iffy, shall we say, I mean, these were brand new old stock, I uh, haven't had them for very long, but one of them, which is the one I used originally, was fine, but the one I opened up specially to do this with actually did not want to play the game. It was shedding. It was shedding at times two speed. It wasn't shedding at times one speed. What I can say is that it was improving, but I didn't have time to, to fiddle about trying to get a tape to work, so I used a tape that was a known good one. But what it does raise is people are going to start saying, oh, headwear, headwear. I'm not sure that it was twice the wear for running at twice the speed, but it was certainly more strain on the tape than at once times. Interestingly, though, you can see that it's only really made a difference to the levels. It hasn't actually made a difference to the frequency response. I've got all the figures for the minus 20, but believe me, they, they basically follow the same pattern as the 0 dB. But if anybody really wants them, send me a message, and I'll send you the pictures. And the final parameters, wow and flutter. There's standard, and there's the other one, and there's the high speed dubbed one. So it's actually all well within spec, and the high speed one was lower than this two standard ones. Onto the proof now. Don't forget, we're copying the cassette. That was never a good idea in the first place, but this is the results we've got. This is what the original cassette sounds like. This is the double speed on the max L, but don't forget the signals are a bit higher.
finally we got the times one. I think it proves that digitalizing cassettes is possible, but it, it means that you're going to have hiss. Um, what does it actually mean? Well, the Vion Flatter was better on the Times 2. The signal levels were slightly higher on the Times 2, but the frequency is cut off at about 14k, which is interesting because obviously everything's doubled, so it means that the band pass of that particular machine is 28k, I would guess. However, if you just want to copy a tape and it's normal, I mean, the music that I used was from the YouTube library and they all cut off at around 15k, so you're not going to notice much difference. But there is a difference. If you want pure quality, go for times one. But if you want better wow and flutter and things like that, then go for times two. You probably won't hear the difference. And if you're over 40, you definitely won't hear the difference between the copy done one way and the copy done the other. Will you hear the difference between a copy and the original? Of course you will. Is it worth copying? That's up to you. If it was me, I would actually copy into the computer, then I'd do some processing, and then take it out to the cassette. But then I wouldn't bother doing that, because what's the point? The cassettes are made to be enjoyed. What you mustn't do is try and save time by digitalising your cassettes by playing, it, playing them out at times too, because you'll only get half your furious response, and that's not very good. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you got something from this. If you did, then you know, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and I'll try and catch you another time. If there's any questions raised, or if you want any other information, just put something in the comments below, and we'll see where we go from there. Thank you very much. Catch you again. Bye.